Hi, my name is Gabriel Moreira and I'll be presenting the paper Rotation Averaging in a Split Second, a Primal Dual Method and a Closed Form for Cyclographs. As the title of the paper suggests, we address an optimization problem known as Rotation Averaging and which can be stated as follows. Given m pairwise rotations, r tilde ij, we parameterize them as 3 by 3 matrices in the special orthogonal group and we assume the set of tuples ij to constitute the edges of a graph which we assume to be connected as the one represented on the right. The goal is to then find n rotations from r1 to rn which minimize a sum of squared errors between edges and nodes of the graph for a specific distance function as represented below. Rotation averaging is at the heart of bundle adjustment and structure for motion and generally geometric reconstruction. Its main difficulty arises from the fact that it's both a high dimensional and non-convex optimization problem. To give you an overview of what we can find in the literature pertaining to this problem, we can start with Gauss-Newton, with two of the most popular frameworks being G2O and GTSEM. In parallel, a number of closed form solutions have been put forward, some of them being suboptimal, that is to say without any guarantees of optimality, but providing a good approximation of the global optimum, such as the chord relaxation and spectral synchronization. In terms of closed forms, for psychographs in specific and considering the geodesic distance, a closed form solution has been put forward. In recent papers, semi-definite relaxations have been in the spotlight. These reformulate the original problem as an STP, and this STP allows us to retrieve the original optimal rotations under moderate noise levels. In our paper, we provide a two-fold contribution, one being a primal dual method for the general rotation averaging problem, and then a closed form solution in the case of cyclographs for the stationary points, always considering the chordal distance between rotations starting with the former, that is, the primal dual method. I'll start by laying out the notation that we'll be using throughout this section. For the Lagrange multiplier, we denote by lambda a symmetric block diagonal matrix as represented on the left. The measurements, which we denote recall by r tilde ij, we stack them in a 3n by 3n matrix, which also happens to be symmetric. The the entry ij of this matrix will contain the rotation corresponding to that edge or a null block if that edge does not exist. Finally, on the right, the variables, which are our rotations, we stack them vertically on a block vector. That being said, we can now state the stationarity condition for rotation averaging, being that the block vector r is in the kernel of lambda minus r tilde. Equivalently, we can state this condition in a different manner by saying that each block lambda i is given by this sum of rotations. Now this, these two are equivalent and the reason why I state them both is that the one on the left will be the base for our primal update whereas the one on the right will be used to form the dual update rule. We can also state a sufficient optimality condition as being lambda minus r tilde being a positive semi-definite matrix. Now, we're ready to start formulating the primal dual method, starting with its initialization. To do this, we'll use one fact from the literature, and that is the primal dual optimal pair for noise-free measurements. When we have noise-free measurements, its me measurement, r tilde ij, can be factorized as ri times rj transpose. And so, if we build the matrix like the one here on the left, which is just the graph degree matrix minus the measurements matrix, we will find the set of rotations lying in its kernel. Attending to the KKT condition I just announced earlier, this means that the optimal Lagrange multiplier is given by this expression on the right, which dep depends also on the graph degree matrix. Now, this would be the optimal Lagrange multiplier for noise-free measurements. But in the literature, we see claims that this is also a good approximation in terms of noisy, when it comes to noisy measurements. To test this claim, what we did was compute the distance between this kernel here for noise-free measurements and the eigenspaces of the, this matrix when we have noisy measurements. And the eigenspace is obviously associated with the smallest eigenvalues. We represent here the cosine of the principal angle between these two subspaces for graphs with different noise levels and different connectivities, here indicated by the Fiddler value. 
As expected, as the noise level increases, the cosine of the principal angle decreases, and as connectivity increases, it appears that they become more robust to noise, also not surprising. The key takeaway from this slide, however, is that for most noise levels here represented, the cosine of the principal angle is, on average, very close to 1. That is to say that this lambda appears to be, in fact, a good approximation of the optimal lambda even for noisy measurements. And thus, we will use it as our dual initialization. Here represented as lambda 0, 0 meaning the zeroth iteration. We're now ready to formulate the primal update. To formulate the primal update, we approximate the kernel of lambda minus r tilde by the three eigenvectors of this matrix associated with the three smallest eigenvalues. Now, the blocks that these three eigenvectors will contain will in fact not be rotations, but we can obtain a set of rotation estimates by computing the nearest rotation to each of these blocks. This is done by solving n orthogonal Proust's problems. At this stage, we have a set of rotation estimates, and these, the, these variables are in fact the solution stated in the spectral synchronization method I talked about earlier. Now, to go one step further, what we can do is take this set of rotations and compute a better estimate for the dual variable. Recall that we had the KKT condition here on the left, but however, we cannot use this explicit dual update rule due to the fact that lambda needs to be symmetric. And this sum of rotations here on the right will not produce a symmetric matrix unless we have attained a stationary point. So what we do is very simply take the symmetric part of this formula. And this constitutes our dual update rule. So overall, given a certain dual estimate, we compute the subspace corresponding to the three smallest eigenvalues of lambda minus r tilde and project the blocks to the space of rotations in order to have a primal estimate. Then we update the dual variable according to this closed form expression. As we will see later on, this allows for a very fast convergence to the global optimum for moderate noise levels. We can now move on to the second stage of this presentation, which is closed forms in cycle graphs. Cycle graphs are of, are of uh, specific interest in, due to the fact that the, we can assess the quality of the measurements by integrating the pairwise rotations along the cycle. So if we had noise-free measurements, the integration R12, R23, so on and so forth, until we go back to the original pose, would produce the identity. Now, in reality, this does not happen, and what we obtain is what we call a cycle error, denoted by E, which is a rotation matrix slightly different from the identity. Now, given this cycle error, researchers have found that the sum of squared angular, or equivalently geodesic errors, is minimized when this error is redistributed over all edges of the cycle equitatively. What we show in the paper is that we when it comes to the, to the chordal distance instead of the geodesic one, the solution is the same. And in fact, we can find the other stationary points of the problem. How so? By taking the nth roots of this matrix, the principal root giving us the global optimum and the other roots giving us stationary points. We go one step further and we also characterize the spectrum of the me measurement matrix denoted by R tilde and show how it relates to the stationary points. To give you an example, here we have on the right a cycle graph and what we're going to do is integrate the pairwise rotations until we go back to the original first pose. As we can see, we have an inconsistency which corresponds to the cycle error. Now the global optimum, as I said, is attained by spreading the error evenly over all edges of the graph, or k equals zero in terms of the notation used earlier. To obtain another stationary point would be to redistribute the error in a different manner, and we have an entirely different solution for this suboptimal stationary point. Moving on to the experiments, we will first assess the quality of our primal dual iterations using post-graph optimization datasets. And what we showcase here is the convergence of the three smallest eigenvalues of lambda minus r tilde over the iterations. Recall that a sufficient condition for optimality was that this matrix be positive semidefinite. So what we see here is somewhat the convergence to optimality. In this case, for this dataset, 
the sphere, which has over 2000 nodes. Convergence is approximately linear and we attain machine precision of the eigenvalues after 0.35 seconds. For another data set, this time the cubicle with 5000 nodes, we also see a similar behavior this time attaining machine precision of the eigenvalues after 0.46 seconds. I would just like to bring your attention to the fact that the initialization is already extremely, extremely good since the eigenvalues are already very close to zero. When it comes to cycle graphs, we built random cycles with random rotations for a noise level of 0.5 radians of standard deviation and we benchmarked the block coordinate descent and shown an averaging which rely on semi-definite relaxation our primal dual method and the closed form solution not surprising the closed form is much faster than the rest but we can see a considerable difference between the primal dual and the other two to conclude our paper addressed rotation averaging making two main contributions one of them being the primal dual, which is very easy to implement, is faster than the state of the art, and reaches global optimal, globally optimal solution. We do not provide convergence guarantees, but these can be verified along the iterations, so a posteriori. For cycle graphs, we set forth a number of uh, closed form expressions for the stationary points and provided a spectral characterization of the matrix of measurements. The code is available on GitHub. Thank you for watching.